Well, folks, we had a wheel bearing go out on our 8420, and uh, here is the axle shaft. It's a 120 millimeter shaft from this tractor. You could get them a 110 millimeters. This is the bearing race. It was broken. Not looking very good. That's the top side. Bottom side looked a lot better. Um, the bearing, what le what's left of it is down there in a pile. And that one sits right out here on the outside edge. And then the uh, top one there goes on from the top. We'll get to that after a bit. Here's the axle, or the carrier. Um, that race that was broken sits right inside here and there's not much room between here and the race and since the race sits you know clear out to the outside edge it's very difficult to get a tiny crowbar in there and peel it out what i actually ended up using is taking a, one of our polar arms apart and using that as a crowbar and beating it with the hammer which didn't work too bad then we had the slide hammer that i finished the job with um i think i could have done the whole thing with that but because it was broken but if it wasn't broken, I'd have had to use a puller of some kind to do it, I'm sure. Okay, so here I'm on service advisor. After um, we get the axle removed from the tractor. I'm not sure what B is about, about putting a screw inside there. I didn't do any of that, and I never had to, I guess. This is where things get a little bit tricky. That uh, T-shaped thing right there is actually a lock washer type thing. There's a little o-ring that kind of keeps it on so it doesn't just fall off. So take that off and you might have to turn the nut forward or backwards to loosen that uh, lock lock ring because it actually locks in the sides over here. Um, and then that comes off and then you can remove the nut. It is standard threads, it's not reverse threads, so don't worry about that. And uh, you can read that if you want. And this is the kind of hook that they had, which I just built my own version of that because I didn't have that, of course. Um, then they got some washers there. And there's a better look at that flat washer. And we'll go over here. And this is your planetary if you need to rebuild that. I'm um, sorry if I'm going a bit fast for those of you that want to read this stuff. You just have to pause the video. Um, we didn't have to do anything with the planetary, so there's some torque specs down there for that. Move on to the axle shaft. This is what they recommended doing. We actually did the same kind of a version of this. We didn't use a uh, bolts like that. We just simply had our pallet forks from a skid steer holding the whole axle up off the ground. And we just took a pipe like this and then we wrapped a chain around the axle to the pipe and then pushed against that. It kind of looked a little bit sketchy, but it worked. And uh, so that's all there is to that system. And then this is what they showed to pull that top bearing, that outer bearing race out of the shaft. And I didn't do that. I was going to do that, but then my puller didn't fit. Um, and if you don't have a rig like that, you just, I suppose you could cut it out. I'm not sure if I'd recommend that or not, but it's up to you. And then there's the different specifications for axle bearings for axle sizes and stuff, uh, inner and outer bearings. So depending, we have the 120 millimeter axle on this tractor. Is that the right one? Yeah, we were just there. Okay, so then there is um, the final bearing and the um, seal yet. And of course they have some kind of stand tool you're sure to drop it down inside there to hold it up, which we didn't have that either. And there's their puller to get that off. We just simply cut the, the bearing out and then just heated it real hot and used a, a pneumatic hammer to knock it out. But I'm sure there's better ways of doing some of that stuff. And again, here's some more um, stuff there. I'm not sure what this picture is here. It might give something. Eh, just that, so. Okay. All right. So install. This is what it's showing to do. We haven't completed all this stuff, so we'll have to go through all this and you can kind of watch us do that. But it gets kind of 
scary when they were telling about adjusting the bearings correctly. I'm not sure how far out we're going to do on that because it's they require a lot, I guess. Um, but you can just kind of go down through the read of that and maybe you can make some sense of it. Here, I don't know that you can see in the picture they placed two lead balls on the axle and they're supposed to smash those down by torquing it and then you take a gauge and you measure that. We're not going to do that because we don't have any lead balls and so I'm not sure how we're going to do it. We're just going to probably throw it together and see what happens. And of course your final screw, and then this is a seal. The seal gets put in last. And I'm not sure how that goes yet. We'll figure it out as we go along. We don't have a slide tool like that, but we have the old seal we can use, which will probably work as well. And yeah, you can pause the video and read this if you want to. And that's the end of the system here. The rest of it you can, um, Figure out on your own, I guess. Okay, I got this bearing fresh out of the oven, so it's hotter than what. Hopefully, it expanded a bit, goes on there easier. I'm trying to get it started there. We'll use the pneumatic hammer after this. Okay, he's putting that race in. We uh, had it in the freezer, so hopefully it'll shrink a little bit and go in hopefully a bit smoother. That's against. Turn? Yeah. Okay. This is our um, vise, I guess, that we're using to hook on. We just took a, a puller apart, put some bolts in there, and cut it in this flat piece of steel, the right angles and stuff. Hooked the chain to it, and that's what we used to lift it on there. And first time, we're going to go ahead and drop it down in here. And then we need to. Uh, Torque it down to 200 foot pounds, and then the lead sinker or the, you know, the lead balls that they're talking about there, that is to figure out the thickness of your shims that you need to put between the axle and the bolt. So we're going to torque it down first, and we'll do the shims later. Good. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna need an extra hand here. Okay, so we torque this to 200 foot pounds. And now we're supposed to spin this several times to make sure it's uh, not too tight. They call for no more than 16 foot pounds. And I could test that theory out somehow I'm sure, but it doesn't feel tight. You can kind of just make sure it's not tight and you're probably okay. Still using your headset? I think the sound actually goes through. 
Oh, I tested it one time. No, it goes to the one on my head. Something so. mine does. I think you got it tight now, sure. You want me to do it? Yeah. Okay, just retool with that. So. so now we're going to go ahead and loosen it back up for what happens. Let's go ahead and loosen it. Oh, you did move it some. Let's turn it over. Is it? Yeah, it's actually turning quite a bit harder. More than 16 foot pounds harder. I don't know. It's going to be fine now. <laughs> Sinkers, I got some grease to put them on with. If need some grease to make sure they stay in place, they don't fall off. Okay. Show the camera now. So here, they said lead balls, six to eight millimeter or eight to ten millimeters. We didn't have any lead balls. We just got some fishing weights, some pretty big sinkers, and I guess we're just gonna use those. Put one on each side. That'll smash down when we torque it down. And then we'll know um, how thick to make our shims. Yeah. 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 sinkers in there and now let's see once if we can get it taken off somewhat carefully here. Just leave them right there. Smashed them. Uh-huh. Okay, tighten the screw up on the back side. Now this in here is in here. That's loose. Or would you want it for sure? I'll tighten it a little bit more. Okay. Now try that next one. Make sure it's the same size. Just, I would say it's the same. Try tightening it. Okay, I moved it a thousandths. It's not much, so. Yep. Okay, now I get those shims right there. See how many it takes to make that same thickness. They might have some dirt in between them, so we might need to clean that out. Probably I do. Okay, we have that installed back on there again. The uh, 
we used the exact same washers as we took out. So nothing changed. There was no tolerance difference. And um, it was, yeah, right on. So now we have put that bolt back in with this funny looking head here. 12 point, I guess it is. And then this here will go on top of that and lock it in place at the right, at, yeah, at a certain spot. And this O-ring just goes on top of that to kind of hold, or it goes around the, the head of the nut, or the bolt, to kind of hold that plate on, I guess, so it doesn't fall off for whatever reason. And then, of course, the pinion goes back in after all that. Um, this bolt gets a final torque of 670 foot-pounds. And uh, I don't know if you guys have a big torque wrench like that, but we don't. So let me see, does that need Loctite on it? I should check that. Uh, install planner stars, and then Titan special cap security specification. It does not say anything about Loctite. Okay, so it's all back together. We just used anaerobic gasket maker sealant there. Uh, it has to be anaerobic from that stuff. And then we're ready to put this outside planetary ring on. And then it's ready to go on the tractor from there. And then we'll put the seal on on this other side, up in this from this side, after it's on the tractor. We'll finish that up. So, just about there. Okay, well, we got this axle put back on here. And uh, tighten the bolts up. You can see our gasket maker squeezing out there. This in here didn't get quite as much. You can see it a little bit. Um, so that should seal up. We gotta let that dry and we're gonna put oil in it. And after I did all that is when I put this seal in. And you can see I made it flush with this outside casting, not with the inside um, spacer there. So that's in. This is a rubber seal on both sides which means it spins inside of itself and not up against either the axle or the housing. Uh, so you, it's like a wear sleeve on its inside of itself. Yeah. And so you don't have to worry about it being clean or put sealant there. It's, it's rubber on both sides.